Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. This is Kathy and today I'm excited to be a part of another video hop. And today's video hop is very special because the Seven Kids Crafts online store is releasing their first ever stamp sets. And I'm very honored to be a part of this hop. I received the Kitty Frills stamp set from Kelly at the Seven Kids Craft online store and I have created three different cards using just this one stamp set. There is also a giveaway and I'll give a little bit more information about that as well as more information regarding this hop a little bit later in the video. But to go over pretty quickly, I do have the coloring sped up quite a bit because I am sharing three different cards and there's a whole lot of coloring and if I didn't speed it up, well, this video would be very, very long. I started out by stamping this little kitty onto a piece of Cougar Super Smooth cardstock using my favorite things, Extreme Black Hybrid Ink. I started with W6 and I wanted to make sure that I had a very good defined line around her little nose. So I just did a little bit of an arch using my darkest color. I also used W6 on the sides of her face just to make sure that that's where the shadows would be the most prominent. Once I was done with the W6, I came in with W3 and blended that out. And I made sure to keep the, the flicking motion going in the same direction as her fur would be going. And I made sure also to leave some white space so that I could maintain some texture within her fur. Once I was done with the W3, I moved on to W2 and filled in pretty much the rest of her face with the exception of her muzzle. Do cats have muzzles? I don't know. Anyway, that part that's right underneath her nose, underneath where I drew in that arch, I left that white so that I could fill that in with W0. I did want her muzzle to be much lighter so that it would appear to be more in the foreground. Then I moved on to her tail and her body and I came back to the W6 and added in the areas where the shadows would be the darkest. Again, particularly on her tail, I did use a flicking motion just so that I could maintain a lot of texture within her tail. Then I moved down to the W3 marker and extended those flick marks out on her tail and blended the W6 out on her body and her feet. So while I finish up coloring this kitty, we'll dive right in and I'll tell you a little bit more about the hop. To be able to see all of the other creators who are participating in this hop, all you have to do is click on the hashtag that's located in the description box below. To be eligible for the giveaway, all you have to do is be a subscriber to my channel and leave a comment below. The giveaway is for one of the brand new stamp sets called Kitty Gems. And please make sure that you leave your comment no later than May 2nd. The winner of the giveaway will be announced on May 8th over on Mad About Cards and Crafts. And you don't have to comment on every single video, but the more comments you do leave, the better chance you have to win. I'll be sure to link to Mad About Cards and Crafts YouTube channel down in the description. And above that, you'll find the links for the Seven Kids Crafts online store, as well as Kelly's Facebook page. So now that I'm done with the coloring, I'm going to go ahead and put this card together. I had used uh, some patterned paper from a pack, I believe it's by Echo Park. Um, if I can find it, I will link to that, as well as all of the other products that I used down below in the description. I adhered some patterned paper in a smaller strip and then adhered that to a piece that was cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. Then I put my stitched rectangle die on top of that and ran that through my die cutting machine. I do like to have the stitching go all the way around. So that's why I did adhere the yellow paper and the pinkish red strip to the flower paper before running it through my die cut machine. Off screen, I had stamped the sentiment and then ran it through my die cut machine with a fishtail banner. And while I was playing around with the layout of the card, I decided that the sentiment strip needed to have a little something. 
So I stamped one of the flowers from the set, again with the My Favorite Things Extreme Black Hybrid ink, and did some very simple coloring with two different red markers. Then I fussy cut that flower out, and once I was done with that, I was able to finish putting the card together. So I adhered a piece of red patterned paper to the front of a top folding A2 size note card, and I did run that through with another one of my stitched rectangle dies. Then I adhered the flower and yellow patterned paper on top of that. I adhered the kitty, which I die cut with a circle die, onto a scalloped circle that I had die cut as well. Added some foam tape to the back of that and put that on the front of the card. I added some foam tape to the sentiment strip and put that in place. Once I had that in place, I added too much liquid glue to the sentiment strips. So I end up picking a little bit of that glue up with a piece of scratch paper and then I put the flower in place. And to finish it up, I used my white gel pen just to add a few details to the center of the flower and that finishes up my first card. Moving on to the second card, I decided to showcase the little stamps that are a part of this set. Lately, that's been one of my favorite things to do. So I randomly stamped the flowers onto a piece of Cougar Super Smooth cardstock using my favorite things Extreme Black Hybrid ink. I stamped them in a very random pattern. I wasn't paying too much attention where they were. I knew that I wanted to have them sort of close together but not too close together because I did want to fill in with some leaves. After I had some of the leaves stamped in, I grabbed a fine tip black pen and drew in my own stems. Once I had those stems drawn in, I decided that I needed a few more leaves, but in order to add those leaves, I was going to have to create a couple of masks. So I stamped the flowers onto a piece of masking paper, cut them out, put those into place, and then continued stamping the leaves to make, it, to make the bouquet look a little bit more full. After I had the additional leaves stamped in, I went back and used my fine tip black pen to connect the leaves to the stems that I had drawn in. After all of the stamping was done, I finally jump right in to the coloring. I started with coloring the leaves first and I used YG17 and concentrated that in the areas where it would be darkest, particularly if there was a flower overlapping one of the leaves. I tried to follow the actual shape of the leaf as well. Then I blended that out with YG03 and I did leave a little bit of white space so I could fill that in with YG01 just so that there would be a nice highlight. I'm only going to show how I colored two of the flowers. I started with BV000 and added that again where the shadows would be the darkest. And the reason that I started with BV000 and then went over it with the yellow is to kind of desaturate that yellow so it's not quite so tart. So after I had the shadows colored in with the BV000, then I come in with my darkest yellow and I go directly over the BV000. Now on the Cougar Super Smooth cardstock, when you first do this, especially putting yellow over a purple. It does look a little weird and a little muddy, but once that ink really settles in and has time to dry, it, it looks perfectly fine. So after I added the darkest yellow over the BV000, I blended that out with Y15, leaving some white space at the very top of the flower or around the very edge of the round flower, and filled that in with Y13. I decided to add some details to the flower centers again with my white gel pen just to add a little something. After I was done with all of the coloring, I started to put the card together. Off screen, I used a polka dot stencil from Whimsy Stamps to create a real subtle background. I used mustard seed distress oxide ink with an ink blending brush to create that background. I ran that through my die cutting machine with the largest wonky stitched rectangle die from Whimsy Stamps and adhered that to the front of a top folding A2 size note card. I used one of the smaller wonky stitched rectangle dies to die cut the flowers. I adhered that to a piece of black cardstock that I had run through my die cut machine with a scalloped rectangle die. I adhered that to the front of the card and that finishes up my second card. 
Moving on to the third card, I stamped this sweet kitty onto a piece of Cougar Super Smooth cardstock with my favorite things, Extreme Black Hybrid ink. The first thing that I wanted to do was make sure that I colored in her muzzle with YR20, and I did that as a reminder to myself to make sure that I left her muzzle nice and light. Next, I came in with YR27 and pretty much colored the whole image in with this color. I did leave some white space, and again, I was trying to make sure that the flick marks were not all even, so that there would be some texture within her fur as well. YR27 is actually my mid-tone. I started with this instead of my darkest color because I really wanted to make sure that I didn't have my darkest color completely overtake the image. There are times when I tend to be a little bit heavy handed with my darkest color and because some of the areas are so small on this particular kitty, I decided to start with my mid-tone first. After I was done with the YR27, this is when I bring in the E39, which is my darkest color. I use it pretty sparingly, but again, I do use a flicking motion, and again, I'm trying to have those flicking motions go in the direction of how her fur would be. Anyway, with the E39, I can use this color now to really accentuate where the shadows would be, like around her ears and at the very top of her head. On the right-hand side of her face, that side would be a little bit darker because it's further away. And not that I'm using a light source, but if I were using a light source, it would be coming from the opposite direction. And I did some of the darkest color up at the tip of her tail and down the back side of her back because her head would be casting a shadow on her back. Once I had the E39 put in the areas where they would be the darkest, I came in with YR24, which is my lightest color, and I blended all of those colors together. The YR24 did lighten up the YR27 and the E39 quite a bit, so I come back in with those two colors just to darken up the areas that got a little bit too light. I used YR20 really quickly just to color in her tummy. And to color the inside of her ear, I used R00 and R20. I decided that this kitty should have really bright blue eyes, so I used B41 for that. And added some highlights in her eye with a white gel pen. I did one more quick coat with YR20 around her muzzle just to soften up some of those lines that I had drawn in with the YR27. After I was done with all of the coloring, it was time to put my card together. I took a piece of Nina Classic Crest cardstock cut to four by five and a quarter. I ran that through my Gemini Junior with the Fluttering Hearts Pierced Cover Die from Honeybee Stamps. I adhered that to a piece of blue cardstock that's just slightly larger and adhered that to the front of a top folding A2 size note card. I had run the kitty through my Gemini Junior with an oval die and adhered that to a blue scalloped oval die cut. I put some foam tape on the back of the kitty and put that on the front of my card. For the sentiment, I just stamped that with VersaFine Onyx Black ink and used my paper trimmer to cut it down into a little banner. And I adhered that to the top of a blue banner. And I would also used my paper trimmer just to cut that down to size. I put foam tape on the back of the sentiment and added that to the front of the card. And for final details, I added a couple of blue sequins and that's it. That finishes up my third card. Thank you so much for joining me today. I do hope you enjoy this hop. Don't forget to click the hashtag in the description below to see everybody else and what they've created using these brand new stamps from 7Kids Crafts online store. And don't forget to leave a comment so you can be entered into the giveaway. Thank you again for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.